welcome. The following is my second speech pathology session with my uh, speech pathologist. This is following my uh, laroplasty or vocal cord surgery. And this is mostly just about uh, recovering the strength of my voice and being comfortable using it in its new state as it is now. So um, I hope you enjoy it. I think it's useful for anyone who's considering getting a uh, glottoplasty, which this is a uh, modified when there's glottoplasty where they take away a portion of the vocal cords and suture them together so that you are left with about half of your full vocal cord range. So that's what I have. And um, so far I've had a pretty good result. Uh, there are still some things I need to work on. Um, mainly it's just getting used to it, but it's also, I still have to work on my accent quite a bit. It's easy for me to forget to use a female accent. So, and there are a few ways to do it. There's like the kind of whiny way where you're just like always asking whiny questions. And then there's um, the more buzzy way where you're just, um, I don't know how else to describe it, but it's, it's the mall girl sound, I would say. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Enjoy. Hi! How are you? Great! Great! Keeping warm? That looks like a cozy jacket. Yeah! Oh yeah, it's... I, I bought this because I was tired of being cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a good down jacket will go a long way. I'm sure you can appreciate that being from Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> I have, yeah, I don't know where my coat is, but it has like the furry... <laughs> <laughs> and, like, a sweet one, you know, nice. I don't like gold. Um, yeah. Partly why I don't like there anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, oh, and it, was it okay for you when it snowed? Yeah, actually, I like it because I'm because I'm not from Michigan. <laughs> it's like a something to plan for me, you know. I've never had to deal with a lot of the downsides. I mean, well, I did this year. I cra it cracked my windshield, but, um... <laughs> yeah. It's not... When you, when you, it's there for a little bit of time, you kind of enjoy it. Yeah. It just, like, lingers, and it's just a nuisance, and it's hard to, like... Right. Well, if, you have to, if you're always having to shovel the snow out of the way, that, that doesn't sound like fun. But thankfully, yeah. yeah. If it's here for two days and then it's gone, it's no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we might get some more. <laughs> What's that? We might get some more this weekend. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Yeah, this has been a lot. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, it, it almost ne before it, it almost never happened. Yeah. Even if I was really trying, I would always get misgendered. In your pitch, just kind of looking at my app and listening to you sounds a little higher than that as well. It's kind of... It's Probably because I can control it more. You know, before I could just do like the lowest pitch. Otherwise it would just not come out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how's it going with the exercises? Uh, it's going fine. I've been doing the exercises. Uh, it cracks a little bit sometimes, still. So, like, especially if I'm going up, not so much when I'm going down, but if I'm going, sing, yeah, it, I get a crack there. But if it's sing, it's, it's fine. Mm -hmm. As you go on the way down. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so how about we do some of those glides? But I want you to, when you're gliding, to make sure that you're, and this can be, this happens a lot, but instead of going sing, it doesn't let sing. It's that really like high tongue position. So sing. When you have the back of your tongue nice and high, it gives your larynx a lot more room to move up and down. And then you you don't want to do it on the E because the E is a really tense vowel. So that can add. Yeah, it's the hardest one for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So making sure as you glide, it's a, and I always think like, it sounds like a siren, like an ambulance siren. Right. Yeah. So try that on the, and I like to say, sing, and kind of like, almost like you're hitting like a gong, <laughs> like sing. So try that. Sing. Getting better. And yeah, usually the more you go through it, it'll start to smooth out. And then, again, any areas that were seem to consistently kind of give out or crack, um, you can kind of circle those areas. So same. kind of go like up and down, right around the area of where it's cracking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I did. I did some of that previously when I was practicing. So I go. Uh, 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 which is amazing. Uh, actually, I can even get up that high because that's all between four fifty and three fifty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my range is ex definitely extended up, which is surprising, which I'm happy about. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, because that doesn't always necessarily happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I've heard from other people. Yeah, that's true. Some, 
sometimes you, you end up like your kind of fundamental frequency is a lot higher, but your actual range gets smaller. So you lose access to the, obviously the body. Yeah. Like yeah, that's what I was expecting, honestly. Yeah. Um, well, that's good. I mean, it's, yeah. So. Everyone has a slightly different experience. So. Right. Um, we try to counsel people on what to expect, but to some extent. We don't know exactly what's going on. True, yeah. I feel really best because I've been, you know, not just this surgery, but all the transgender surgeries. I've known a lot of people that have had worse experiences than I have, so I feel really fortunate. Great. That it's all worked out really well. <laughs> yeah. Good. I'm glad. Um, okay. So let's do... Do you have your straw? Yeah, I do. Let me get a little more water. Okay. What, do you just want to do the bubbles? Yes. So just do... Uh It's okay. Yeah, it's just, it's funny, isn't it? And I noticed, like, uh, without the water, it went up to, it was at 150, and then I went to 180, and then I went to 250. Uh -huh. So. Is that something you were doing? Um, not really consciously, no. It just seemed like the pressure changed at what it was comfortable to do. But all of those. Like at 250, saying the ooze, that still feels pretty possible. If you don't feel like you're straining. No. Okay. No, I mean, well, actually doing, doing all those glides was getting a little tiring. But other than that, it's fine. Okay. Um, okay. And let's just do like five more ooze. Mm -hmm. Oh, with the straw or without the straw? Without the straw. <laughs> That's right. Ooh. 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 Um, 
Um, and are you feeling strained when you do that? Because there's just a little bit of like uh, oh, uh, maybe the tiniest bit. Let's see. If I did a lower, I would say, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, that seems, that seems less effort. That's about the bottom of my range. The bottom of your range, that feels like less effort. Yeah. And that was like 180? Maybe? Yeah, that was about 170 to 180, something like that. Okay. Um, where would you like it to sit, ideally? Um, actually, I feel like it's it's been good, just the way I've been using it. Um, about thinking about pitch. Just like yeah. So I guess that goes between like around 190 to 300, okay. mostly 190 to 250. Okay. Um, and that seems great. I mean, I don't know what else I could ask for. I'm sure it'll get. It won't sound quite so raspy eventually. Yes. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> I mean, I think even just from um, the last time I saw you to today, it sounds less breathy and raspy and kind of rough. Oh yeah. 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 And it's, it's really neat, too, that you're doing those videos because that's also, and recording yourself, because that's also a way to kind of track progress over time, because yeah. living with your voice every day, you, you can't appreciate the changes when they're not, when they're a little bit more subtle. Is what right, yeah. It seems like, um, yeah, my YouTube channel, what people appreciate the most is like other trans women who want to see you. What to expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because this still isn't a super, I don't know how many people in the world have gotten this surgery, but it's, I would say, fairly uncommon, like relatively new for us to be doing it here. So. Right, yeah. And actually right before I got it, I talked with a woman who had, who had gotten it or something similar, and it had only raised her. 50 hertz and I yeah I know another woman who it worked out pretty well for her but it's she didn't want it to be all the way as high as I do either so it worked out fine for her and it actually works good for her I think yeah um, and sometimes you know like it gives you some baseline lift and then you can also with the tools that you know, we learn in voice therapy you can kind of give yourself a little bit more of a bump, but it's not like you're working, like, to bridge such a big gap that it's hard. No, not at all. It's actually so much easier now. Um, well, now it's easy to get up to 250 and above, and it never was before. That was a real struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Um... Okay, let's do a little bit. Let's go back to our old friend, the hum. <laughs> okay. Um, so just don't necessarily think about a certain fit, but just a nice, relaxed. <sighs> I, I'm trying to actually. Um, it's difficult. Yeah. 
to go lower, which is kind of interesting. Um, not really. Okay. So let's go back to just whatever feels comfortable. Um, that's for, okay, now I, I had to drink some water, I guess. <laughs> now I can do it lower. Mm -hmm. And then from the higher than that. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to do that, no. Um, yeah, it just, it doesn't feel like it's moving smoothly. Maybe a little bit of my back teeth. Okay. Do you feel tension here? Yeah. You do? I okay. do, yeah. Okay. So let's not go to the humming quite yet. Um, so kind of work on keeping things nice and open. I mean, I think some of that wavering is happening because probably still some swelling and healing happening. Um, I think it's really important to make sure you're doing well with your hydration. I know you drink a lot. Of yeah, that. I've been I've been trying to do better with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And as much as you can of uh, just plain water. Yeah. Green, I'm I am do I am doing more of that for sure. Um, so does the caffeine tighten up the voice or something or? Caffeine um, has a drying effect, so it pulls water from the body. So it can cause you to feel or cause dehydration, basically. Or, you know, like when we see people that where they'll drink like four cups of coffee a day and like minimal water, like the mucus is just thicker that's in their throat. And, you know, the vocal cords vibrating is a mechanical process and it needs lubrication. And yeah. when the mucus is thicker, it doesn't do its job. So it kind of like will stick on the cords and actually can kind of impede vibration versus help make it as smooth as possible. So water, um, lozenges can be helpful, but not with menthol because menthol can be dry. Um, and then also sometimes like a steam, I don't know how accessible this would be for you where you are, but like. A personal steamer, like inhaling steam, or even if you just like All right, yeah. Tea, like if you I don't know if it's cold or hot tea, but I just kind of breathe in the steam, so getting some moisture to the throat that way. Yeah. Um, would be helpful. If I could remember to do that, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna try. Okay. Well, the water part. Well, yeah, the water I can do. I can do that. We'll play around instead now maybe with some other resonant sounds. So this is just, again, 
Okay, trying to coordinate muscle and air in a really easy way. So I want you to take a breath in and just do that two more times in through the nose. Next time when you exhale, I want you to exhale on a hissing sound. So, okay. so that should all feel nice and easy. And then again, inhale through the nose, exhale on the S. You're going to exhale on an S, but you're going to turn it into a Z by basically turning on your voice. So it's going to be. For the most part. Okay. What's the part that's not comfortable? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, there is still some effort there. Some effort, okay. Yeah. Where do you feel the effort? In my throat. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, where do you feel the vibration in your mouth when you do that? Oh, in my teeth. And now, breathing in and exhale on a shh. One more time. And the next time, you're going to start with a shh and then turn on your voice. It's going to sound like a shh. So, Uh, I don't feel, yeah, the effort. I don't feel the effort so much. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and now let's try, we'll try another one. We'll breathe in and breathe out on an F, so. And for this one, I want you to think about just kind of placing your teeth gently right at your lips, so don't kind of put a lot of tension there, because that's going to make it, have you put more pressure on the patty mouth. So just, Yeah, it was. Simple. It wasn't bad. Yeah. 
Um, okay, let's try one more. So first we're gonna exhale on that. Wait, you're about to say three. And again, everything in the mouth, like the tongue should be fairly relaxed, not super tense. Uh, 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 so try um, when you transition into the voice sound. I want you to still start with the voiceless, so not breathing. You're still, but like start okay. and then on the voice. <laughs> kind of alternate between the different sounds and if there's one that seems to work really well you can stick to that one but kind of breathe in breathing again and then just kind of going back and forth and really so when you are making a voiceless sound there should definitely be no effort because you're not really engaging the vocal cords and the idea is to like slowly turn on the voice as the air is already moving freely and kind of continue that really open in the throat easy phonation yeah um, so i think working on that for now and i don't want to do anything that's gonna invite tension so maybe humming can be something we work towards later um but right now i think just re-coordinating with the new system like the breath and muscle um with the new kind of configuration of your vocal cords right yeah mm -hmm. it's definitely it's a new normal it's a new normal yeah. <laughs> yeah um but i think you know just based on what i've seen with other patients going through this like you're on a good trajectory excellent yeah i'm looking I'm looking forward to it being better. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> I guess I had, you know, three to six months is where we kind of say is the right. Normal, yeah. Normal, which is uh, not. Well, that's, yeah. Well, I've heard like six months, but it could be up to a year. <laughs> yeah. So. But that's like a year where you like really feel like it's stable. Like stable and it's really you know, I think it'll be stable before then but yeah. we're kind of tuned in and it's exactly it's going to be like really really predictable um, and so right now we're still relatively close to the beginning <laughs> yeah yeah well, let's um, see it's I mean, just a little over a month now so it's not that long yeah um, it's still like it's getting more like more and more functional as time goes on. You know? Yeah. Is that yeah? I've had patients where they're in that like really breathy zone for a while. So um, I think just kind of making sure you're not pushing it too much and working on the tent. You know, not allowing that tension to come. Yeah, well, it probably helps that I'm not using it very much. Yeah. So it has plenty of time to rest. Yeah, I think it's been patients where, like, if they try to go back to, like, work or you know, a situation where, like, they're having to talk and with masks and all this stuff, it's just like... Oh, like, yeah. Nobody can... Uh, yeah, no one can hear me. It's a problem. That's a problem, for sure. Yeah. 
uh, especially my mother, my stepmother is hard of hearing, so that's that's also a problem. <laughs> yeah, the volume piece is definitely the hardest thing in the beginning. But yeah. that will, it will all get better. Um, so yeah, I think working these exercises, continuing to do the glides, just kind of experimenting like with the ooze, like where kind of seeing where the pitch falls and where it like kind of wants to be. Um, yeah. Use that as our guide instead of trying to force it one way or the other. Um, yeah. Do you think like reading or anything like that out loud is useful or should I just keep on resting for a while aside from the exercises? I think you can practice reading out loud as long and just kind of listen to your body like if it starts right. to feel really uncomfortable then you can stop yeah but there's no like indication to you know be on like any sort of modified voice rest it's just you don't want to be somewhere you're like pushing like trying to be loud or talking over noise or through a mask yeah but if you're just sitting at home reading I think that's Okay. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. I do it. A, I've done it a little bit, but not a, not a whole lot. And I can't be loud, really. You know, actually, in situations where I need to be loud, I just don't speak. <laughs> yeah. That will. I don't have a choice. Depending on like how necessary that is, there's working around like there's personal amplification. Things, devices. You oh yeah. Yeah. You know, not. Carry a bullhorn. Carry a bullhorn around. <laughs> well, they have these little. I, well, like teachers will use them and stuff, like little microphones. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, just if you like, for example, if you do have like family members really hard of hearing, um, we've had like I've had patients where like. I'm working with one of the, like, the wife and the husband's hard of hearing, and she has a voice problem, and that's just a, a tool to kind of help. Okay. Help yeah. So, there are things available if, if you get to a point where it's good. Yeah, okay. Okay. But, I, I think I'm okay, but, yeah, good to know. Yeah. There's more available. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'll send you the instructions for that little breathing Without flow phonation, so flowing with the sound. Sounds um, good. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's also kind of relaxing and meditative, I think. It is very meditative, yeah. It's like doing a basic meditation in introduction. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will go from there. And I think maybe like two weeks is a good amount of time in between to. Okay. Um, Sounds good. But, you know, what's happening naturally, heal. And yeah. I think that sounds like a good idea. Great. Um, I think that's a good amount of time. Okay. I'm asking you like a question. Or I'm you like a question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm working on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I just um, look through all of the printouts of your instructions and I found the tag questions one. I'm like, okay, I gotta I really gotta keep practicing on that. Um, right? Yeah. I was kind of doing that. It was easier when I had a super sensitive girlfriend. <laughs> you have a super sensitive girlfriend? I had a super sensitive girlfriend and if I didn't do that everything it, it came out like a a battle. So <laughs> those statements were too direct. Yeah. <laughs> Only I have questions. <laughs> that sounds like a fun game. <laughs> hey, it was it was a way to make me learn quickly, for sure. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so I'll send you that stuff, and then why don't we just... Thank you for watching. May you be well. May you be blessed. May you be at peace. May all your heart's desires be fulfilled. 
may be enlightened. Aloha.